Over the past year or so, I've been working on rebuilding the tub for the CJ5 I pulled out of the woods. Over the past year or so, I've been working on building this CJ5 tub out of some rusty bits I pulled out of the woods and a lot of panels I formed myself. I'm just about to the point where I can get some primer on it, but there's a lot of little things I need to finish up first. There were little tubes here that were pockets for bows for the original style soft top, but since I'm sure I'll never use those, I figure I'll delete these. I also need to weld up the underside of all of the tubes I put in for the body mounts. I didn't do a lot of metal finishing on the welds on the tow boards, and I think I can get them a good bit straighter than they are. And then there's this hole. This little lip folded over here, which I didn't do on this part yet, which means it's time to make another tool. I can probably use that same tool to fix up this piece. There are also a ton of holes in the firewall. Some are original, some aren't, but most of them I'm not going to use, so now's the time to get rid of them. I 
At some point in this Jeep's previous life, someone had hacked in some holes for a heater here. This is one of those where it's easier to cut the whole area out and patch it all at once. By now you probably have the idea of the process, and it's just a lot of small, tedious patches I need to do. And once all that was done, it's time to move on to stripping off the primer that I put on here temporarily as I went along. There are a couple of holes back behind the rotisserie that I weld up that I can't get to. metal prep on here to clean it and etch the metal. While I had the rotisserie freed up, I figured I would hang all the removable floor panels and little pieces from it and make it easier to get these knocked out. I'm going to eventually do bed liner or undercoat on all of the floor parts, so I'm brushing it on because I'm not really concerned about the finish quality at this point. I'm going to hear about that in the comments. Getting ready to do the second coat here. I'm using it, uh, well, it's master coat, but you can't really read it there. The story behind this is the channel Repair Geek did a shootout on all the various different rust paints that are out there, and this stuff pretty much blew away everything else. The downside of that is they're a real small company, and they're kind of overwhelmed by the demand right now, so it's kind of hard to get it. In 2015, British filmmaker Charlie Shackleton made a protest film called Paint Drying. It was a single shot of white paint drying on a wall with a runtime of 10 hours and 7 minutes, done to protest the cost of review by the British Board of Film Classification. He originally shot 14 hours of film, but the money raised by the Kickstarter campaign for the film would only cover the classification review costs for 10 hours and 7 minutes. If you want to support me on Patreon or with the YouTube membership, I promise I'll keep it more interesting than that. Once the firewall was done, it was back on the rotisserie for more cleaning and prep. This one might spur some debate, but Mastercoat recommends doing a coat of paint before doing any filler, so I'm going over all of my weld seams with a brush. The conventional wisdom is the fiber reinforced filler is less prone to absorbing moisture, so if there are any pinholes in any of the welds, it's not as likely to rust out behind the filler. The downside of the fiber reinforced filler is it's really tough to sand and creates really gnarly dust. Once things are sealed up with the reinforced filler, subsequent coats can get done with easier to sand filler. The nature of this Jeep means it's not worth spending a lot of time blocking everything to be perfectly straight. I'm going more for just smoothing out the welds and making them less obvious. The ideal amount of filler is of course none, but I feel pretty comfortable with how much ended up on here. So my plan here all along was to try to save as much of the original patina as I could. 
Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot. But I'm going to stick with that plan for now and see how it looks. One thing I don't want to do is try to fake the patina. It's not really my style. Some guys are good at it. I don't know. I kind of feel like if I just patched in a little panel, I would just kind of blend it into the rest of it, paint it the proper color and call it good. It's just that I've kind of patched in everything. I don't want to make this too nice because, well, then I'd be afraid to do Jeep stuff with it. And if I do Jeep stuff with it, I feel like I'll redevelop some of the patina pretty quick. I know there are going to be some people who say, why go through all the work on this and not finish the job and actually make it nice? Well, I thought I'd just explain that. But on top of that, we're in an 80-20 situation here. I can get it to 80% with 20% of the effort. Getting the last 20% perfect would be substantially more work. Also, I just don't have the skills for that. There are some mistakes I've made along the way that would make it really hard to get this thing to the point where it would be a good result. So if I can make it look like it makes sense for a beat up old Jeep, I'll be happy with that. I did a second coat of primer on this and now I'm seam sealing everything on it. It looked like almost all of the rod on this started where panels overlapped, so the more I can do to prevent moisture and dirt from getting in there, the better. I made a giant mess doing this, but all of this will get covered up with bed liner eventually. I want to wait until I have all of the other brackets for anything else that's going in here welded in before. I bed liner the inside. I did do all of the seam sealing on the outside, and I shouldn't have to add any brackets here, so let's turn this thing red. I'm going to run over this with some 320 grit just to smooth it out and kind of feather in the edges. I've said it before that these old Jeeps were basically farm implements, so it seems appropriate. I went down to Tractor Supply, picked up some truck tractor and implement paint. The International Harvester Red is apparently a pretty close match to the original color of this Jeep. I also got the hardener and the reducer. This paint was cheap and it doesn't get very good reviews online. It sounds like it's durable, but it tends to fade, which sounds like it would be a problem, except that's sort of the look I'm going for. We'll see how it works out. Well, I got the first coat on there, let it dry, and I've run into one small problem, which is this looks absolutely terrible. Looking through the camera here, it doesn't really show just how bad this looks in person. This red is a pretty close match to the original. This is what I just painted, and this is some of the original that was behind the dashboard where it hasn't faded. But because this thing's been repainted between three and five times before, it doesn't match what's actually visible on here, and it just really clashes, and it's not the look I'm going for or had imagined. I think the thing to do here is to spend some time fooling around with mixing up some paint and pigments and see if I can get a color I like better. So this time I didn't mask off anything, I just kind of oversprayed a little bit. Now I'm going to go back with the scuff pad, kind of feather this all back together, knock some of the gloss off it. I pulled out one of the side panels for the hard top, cleaned it up pretty well, just kind of put it on there to check, and I think that looks pretty great. Using that scuff pad, I got through to the underlying red in a few spots, and I think that'll fade in nicely, give it a little bit of unevenness, make it match pretty well. I thought you said you weren't going to do fake patina, and we'll pin that. You guys can just like that comment, save you some time. I'm going to draw the line at painting on fake rust spots, though. I'm sure it'll get enough of those on its own. To get you the full effect, I went ahead and put this thing back together. I also swapped on some different wheels. These are Suzuki Samurai wheels. I painted them to match the body color. I went with these because they cleared the disc brake conversion in the front. Now I can put these spacers where they belong. I was a little worried that with as much work as I had to do on this thing, it was going to kind of lose the beat up old Jeep character, but I think I managed to save that. I'm under absolutely no illusion that in the traditional sense, this is any sort of a good paint job, but I think that for the look I'm going for, it's absolutely perfect. Actually, I'll use these for something.